Control is a game where the impossible is made plausible, where the going gets ghost, and where 90% of all battles are fought using stone-based blunt force trauma. In this game, you play as Traffic Control, who is given supernatural abilities by her tulpa and the unnaturally Finnish Janitor, as she undergoes the most complex and deadly job application known to man. As the new director for the Not SCP Foundation, you're given the job of researching and containing supernatural kitchen appliances with minimal or no government oversight and what appears to be Praetorian Guard succession law. You assume this mantle to fight the Hiss, a red-tinted malevolent force of death, to stop them from breaching the Hasbin Hotel dimension. And much like any problem, this can be solved with a gun. But stronger than any gun is our protagonist Extreme Knack for hurling rocks at literal breakneck velocity and in the process of destroying her enemy, conducts more stoning than Saudi Arabia. Here at the federal government, our exorcisms are performed with extreme prejudice. Control is one of the best action shooters that I have played in years, and to explain why, we're going hog wild. So don't take this as legitimate consumer advice, because I am as qualified and intelligent as an EA executive. Instead, I ask you to join me in untangling the thrilling combat, the stellar visuals, the unusual plot, and a save system more malformed than Charles II. Jack at it again at 56. Help me! Help me! Mama boy. I like it cuz you Hello, I'm the Luigi. Now, this game is surprisingly simple. Almost everything that you do is just in a room, shooting people, and that's the best shit ever. There's no pre-animated takedowns, no cinematic set pieces, no following an NPC for six fucking hours. Please, Bourbon, speed up. Every shootout is up to you, and that's what makes the spectacle significantly more impressive than the Left 4 Dead 2 pre-rendered gas station explosion. Sorry, guys, I was filming for a video. Can we, like, kick this fucking dude? In a way, this game is basically only possible because of modern CPUs. If I showed this to my father ten years ago, he would have a fucking aneurysm. In those dark times, we were confined by Skyrim's weakness to only render 10,000 cheese wheels at once. You'll probably need a good computer to render it, since every bullet spawns at least 50 clipboards upon impact. DLSS is also a miracle technology for when I don't want my computer to etch ones and zeros on a stone tablet. I highly recommend it. This aesthetic is very appealing, because this game doesn't have the slave labor budget of Dubai. Therefore, it sticks to relatively clean interiors that you subsequently trash like your local McDonald's bathroom. Just don't enter the city no our adventure takes place in one building called the Oldest House, where the Federal Bureau of CIA Mormons conducts ethical experiments on the supernatural, like sissy hypnosis. Ooh, you want to hit the bell? It's a gateway between our world and the extra-dimensional, which is why white people immediately colonized it. There is variety, but what is there is tailor-made to make you feel like a pit bull in an orphanage. Enemies explode into colored smoke, rooms glow with beautiful lighting across a mirror sheen, and you can throw e everything. You can even help the disabled into the fucking ground. It's art direction that makes this game pop, and it's all about that spectacle. So make sure you fill your PC with an adequate number of beans. You are the agent of destruction of the game and your computer, and the what visuals the only emphasize this, but it would be nothing without that sick gameplay. Battlefield 4 is a great looking game, but I struggle to theorize how the AI climbed out of the abortion bit. Fortunately, we're playing a game that has more than two buttons, so it's time to explain. Lesson one in video James, the buttons. There's the aforementioned Mach 5 stone toss, but that's not all. You can literally fly in this game. Do you know how many options that unlocks? The paint buckets think they're safe and suddenly this bastard's leaping direct. Among these are some fancy, less cool abilities like a dodge, a shield, and the ability to overwrite their consciousness. It's for the greater good. But what about the weapons? Doesn't Call of Duty have weapons? Well, the emphasis isn't really on the gun, so you have the generic guns, maybe a grenade launcher, or maybe you change class to soldier and die anyways because you suck. And then you have the pierce, which vomits railroad spikes into the enemy at Mach 6. No point in using anything else anymore, you just have to join the railroad. Shut the fuck up, Desdemona. You can use your weapons on basic enemies, but there is intense variety with enemies that have shields, enemies with more health, and enemies with both. But the most threatening enemies are capable of harnessing the strongest powers in the entire game. Dwayne the Rock John. Bullets are a scratch, and missiles are laughable compared to the sheer, incomprehensibly damaging effects of the chimpanzee attack. They are genuinely serious threats because they can dodge your strongest attack, which is also the rock. L let's get back to that. That later, but by far the most engaging enemy in the game is the <laughs> <laughs> 
These all culminate to form a chaotic, fun mess of utter destruction. With modifications, upgrades, and skill progression, we will get back to that shit. So you can do a variety of builds and experiment with your- Okay, I lied to you, we're actually doing this now. This video is being hijacked by the bad fairy. The spectacle of the game and the first time experience is amazing, downright fantastic. But, there is a serious problem in that the single and only tactic the player can do requires a return to monkey. Throwing rocks is objectively, always, in every scenario, the best strategy possible. Why do you think all my footage is just throwing rocks? There are upgrades, but rocks are objectively the best upgrade, so why do anything else? All other tactics are effectively LARPing that you want to win, because of all things, Antifa gaming is how you win. Every fight, every time. This will grate you by the end, and it makes repeated playthroughs repetitious. But Maxor, why can't you just use a different strategy if throwing rocks gets so boring? Well, this wouldn't be a problem in a normal game designed by a non-Finnic ethnicity. However, this is an enemy at the beginning of the game, and this is an enemy near the end. I fully upgraded this gun. Effectively, enemies scale faster than you can upgrade your weaponry, which makes you weaker and more pathetic by the end of the game. There is, however, one strategy that actually gets more effective as you level it. Can you guess what it is? To get the exact same dopamine as you did at the beginning, you have to use rocks or you're literally gimping yourself. It's like going to the zoo, but you're told the only way to see other animals is to jump into the chimp exhibit. It would be nice if I could choose more ways to be more effective, but the game has chosen for me. I should be allowed to feel more powerful as the game goes on, especially if you fill the game with literal RPG mechanics. Do not get me started on the mods. 90% of them are shit like save ammo when levitating, shoot 5% more, receive more money on Christmas if it's a Tuesday. On my first playthrough, I went the entire game without finding a single damage mod. The grind has literally no relationship to success whatsoever, so consider ignoring it. But what can't be ignored is our motivation. Why are we here? Where is the nearest Walmart? How to evade the police after create bomb? These answers and more can be found in the lore, a strange tale of a janitor and a whore. I love this game for the experience that it gave me once, and the story is a huge part of that, so it's time to explore. The oldest house is a building out of time, shifting as you progress, a barrier between us and the cosmos. We appear to be under the influence of terrifying cosmic beings that control its operations called the board. I just went shopping at Home Depot. These fuckers are inhuman, non-Euclidean voices originating from a gigantic inverted pyramid in the astral plane. You need a goddamn thesaurus to describe them. And everyone just kind of listens to their commands for seemingly no reason. Sorry, Joe Biden, in real life the polyhedron gets the girl. In the midst of this bullshit, there's also a cosmic war going on between beings of sound. The first is the Red Hiss, a force of death which invades and occupies the oldest house to spread its dominion, and the other is Polaris. Polaris is trapped inside a fucking tetrahedron. This necessitates the conscription of our protagonist to fight the cosmic war for them. At least we have a game. And to make matters worse, there is yet another mysterious, extra-dimensional presence lingering in the halls, the most powerful of them all. A Finnish guy. It's a big plot point that he lends you his Walkman. That's how fucking strong they are. Take my cassette player. You can borrow it. The song is a present from my friends to you. It will get you through the maze so you can do your job. The only issue is that this unfolds due to fetch quests, exclusively. Oh, Jessup, we need rocks, go get the rocks. Oh, I gotta, I gotta find Dylan, oh boy, we're, we're in the prison now. Oh, it looks like Dylan walked by himself past me, back to exactly where I began the quest, causing all my time to be wasted. Oh, what's that, Dylan, you gotta, I gotta find the spooky tetrahedron. Oh, crinkle crack there goes my back. In reality, the plot is uniquely simple, and you could probably remove your brother from the story. There's this one moment where Dylan expresses doubt for your cause. The Foundation kidnapped him. It hurt Jessie and then made her director within three seconds of walking in. The story is a struggle between a good side and an evil side. Every salient point that Dylan makes is kind of shrugged off as him being just crazy. And Jesse's just like, oh man, you know, the guys who kidnapped my brother, I'll, uh, I'll work for him without questioning that. Almost had nuance or moral complexity there. Good thing that I whew, levitated over it. Now all I have to do is put my brother in a fucking coma. Stop screaming, Dylan. This is all slightly offset by the presence of one Dr. Darling, whose personality is so so strong, I can only assume the game was built around him. When I became tired of the Dylan saga, Darling was there, dancing on a projector in my mind palace. Dynamite, 
I found myself drawn to him, loving every second of his performance, and I think I know why. Jessie has the personality of a fish. She could suck the rainbow out of a pride parade. The expansions can try to help with this, but no, they don't. When I review DLC, they're often bombastic, new, and interesting, but Control's expansions suffer from the malaise of the late game. They typically drag on, and I'm just bored. They even got Alan Wake in the expansion, where they fake the moon landing. That's supposed to be a fun sentence, but the gameplay is identical. The Foundation DLC tries to shake things up by adding a new enemy, but instead of blending it into the combat, the game sends 50 screaming baboons to fight you all at once. POV, you are a miner on Discord. With all this in mind, I can't really recommend that you play Control. Wrong! That's right, this game is making a comeback. Sometimes, entire games can be boiled down to just one moment. One pure example that stays with you forever and makes the experience truly worth playing. For me, there is nothing more emblematic of this than the ashtray maze. So if you're interested in playing Control, here is the magic word. This is when the game dives headlong into the absurdity, the action, and everything else that makes this game actually good. And if you don't enjoy Control, at least you can take away this. Every mechanic, every encounter was all building up to the moment that you grip your Finnish Walkman and let it play. And yes, this music is in the game. The game might not be worth playing, but Ashtray Maze is a recommend. I would like to thank the kind and truthful members of the federal government for adequately funding my clandestine operations in Peru. If you'd like to contribute towards the understanding of the supernatural objects that are my videos, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching and screaming, and of course, mermaids are real.